Well, good morning. I'm to Mertner now, aren't I? Lovely, lovely. It's just what we want. It's been a lovely weekend, nice and dry. And the next two days is going to be great as well. So everything's looking up. That's the most important. Mornings are pulling out now, lovely. The evenings are getting on. Everywhere's a plus. Keep smiling, that's all I can say. And enjoy the weather. Got a bit of gardening to do now, so uh, that'll keep me busy for a minute or two. Anyhow, I've got three birthdays today. And Neil Arby's his birthday today. Um, happy birthday to a part. And then we got a, a dear friend of mine lived down by the warm world, Josephine Powell. It's her birthday today. Have a lovely day today, Josephine. And then we got one of my relations, one of my well, great nieces, really. Um, is her partner's R Richard Costa. Um, it's his birthday today. So happy birthday to you, Richard. And uh, I just hope you get spoiled. All right. Anyhow, um, on Thursday again this week, it's uh, in the Salvation Army. If anybody want a cu nice cup of tea and a bit of cake and all, go down the Salvation Army and hail there. They do a wonderful job. Absolutely fantastic. Now, I'm going to do um, a couple of David Prowse's little poems here today. One's called Birds of a Feather. Oh, we had our times in the past. Old Jam was looking back. Like 1956, he said, when things was looking black. First, Ada lost her wedding ring with Christmas close at hand. And as for Christmas dinner, well, we had nothing special planned. But as so often happens, there was better news to come in the shape of Farmer Oskin with a job he wanted done. Come on up and chop some logs, he said, because I shan't have the time. And you shall have a chicken, plump and testy, in his prime. Well, the chopping wasn't no trouble, but the second part was hard, because my wedges still had feathers, and was strutting round the yard. And he heard him, oh, Christmas bargains, by the way, he looked at me, and run like mad, spread out his wings, and fluttered up a tree. Of course, as I climbed, he clacked and clucked, and up back down to earth, while well, I'll express my doubts about his origins of birth. Trust me to find the only bird from Inverness to Hale, with a brain like Albert Einstein, and a turbo of his tail. In the end, I peeled my overcoat and catching underneath, but another problem surfaced and to temper my relief, because I couldn't kill that chicken if you give me 50 quid. I just haven't got it in me, never will have, never did. And what will Ada say, I thought, as she started off for home, as I started off for home, with a chicken tucked beneath my arm, my heart as cold as stone. I had to tell the story as a bitter truth aloud, but Ada, God bless Ada, Oh, that woman done me so proud. She said, I love you, Jan Travaskas, as I loved thee all my life. You're a man of gentle nature, and I'm proud to be your wife. Go in and take your boots off, light the fire, and hang your hat. There's corned beef in the cupboard, and we'll make the best of that. <clears throat> well, I put my arms around her, slow to let the moment pass, then glanced towards the chicken, where he scrabbled in the grass. A glint of something sparkled where he scratched aside the leaves, and there was Ada's wedding ring to pay for his reprieve. Come brief on the table, not a penny to her name, no merry chink of glasses, nor the taste of grape, nor grain. A chicken in the garden, that had nearly drove me mad. The best, most cherished Christmas me and Ada ever had. Another old one is set with flowers. It's a well-known law in physics for those who take a drink, that, when the night seems early, is later than you think. So a man should buy insurance against these addled hours with a thoughtful prior purchase of a timely bunch of flowers. So, on the last occasion when the boys enticed me in, a clutch of pink carnations sat nestled by the gin. And when we'd sung Trelawney for the twenty-second time, I faced the homeward journey with a calm, though easy mind. They wished me down the bypass in Charlie's old Chevette, Good night, my friends, I hollered as they dropped me by the step. I sniffed the bouquet, smiling like the cleverest of men, then took three paces forward and four more back again. What had happened to my door key, my pockets wouldn't tell, so I kicked aside the empties and balanced on the bow. As her dressing gown peered to outwards, before she had a chance to speak, I thrust the flowers towards her and swept her off my feet. You're wonderful, I told her, and sent from heaven above. Please take these humble flowers as a token of my love. And the tender words she whispered are still with me today. Go home, you great banana. 
You live three doors away. Take care.